tell me in terms of race, because this is this is where you've hit a lot of your the barriers recently. How would you do that on a racial basis? Would you, you, you would you just wait for them to express in what individual unique way their lives might have been affected by the color of their skin, or would you just ignore it, or or how would you make it clear that you were available to listen to them if those were some of the issues that they had? That you just said it at the end tail there, making it clear to each of the students who are in the learning environment, whether they're teachers or whether they're, you know, K through 12 students or adult learners, that I am available to hear and to listen and to not prejudge. So a lot of my work, I, I call it holistic teaching and learning. It involves really getting to know people <laughs> as individuals. And that means, you know, what is their experience in this walk through life? What are their learning needs at this time? How can I best support that and, and, you know, and get to know each person as an individual? It takes a lot of work and interest to do. And I find that when you do make those connections and you do get to know people as individuals, Without, you know, all of these stereotypes and assumptions and the biases that can get, you know, brought in, depending on different perspectives that you're working from, it really does help people to feel more comfortable, to feel like, you know, there is a person meeting a person and not just a teacher, you know, that power dynamic of the teacher, the expert and the content and some kind of mediating factor between there. So that, that's what I really do focus on is building those relationships with students. And, and, you know, just we're co-learning. I, I don't, I don't feel like I ever have all the answers or I should have all the answers, but what I, what I do is help guide people um, through ways of thinking about a topic or an issue, not telling them what to think or, you know, um, how they should think, but there's different perspectives, ways of seeing this issue, for example, different lenses we can use, what lens resonates with you. And, and letting the learner decide for themselves, you know, what, it, what is most important. So that's fascinating because when it came to DEI, as it were, you, one of the things that you came a cropper over was that you presented different ways of thinking of race in, and different ways of thinking about diversity and told or didn't tell, but engaged students in in thinking about these different approaches and what they might get from them. So, for example, let's let's you wrote this rather interesting essay I found um, on different philosophical perspectives to the question of race. It reminded me a little bit of my own attempts a long time ago to to figure out different perspectives on the question of homosexuality. They were they were legitimate positions from the what we might call the prohibitionist right to the liberationist left to a liberal position, to a conservative position. And, and if you, I had a particular view, but I hope to present them all fairly enough so that readers could, if they said, well, I don't agree with Sullivan. And I think these people are smarter than that, are better than that and for these reasons. If, if a book achieved that, then I was very happy. That would, that would absolutely, I did not expect writing a book to everybody comes to the end of it agreeing with me. But I did want to kind of explode this idea that you're either pro-gay or anti-gay. There's a, this crude, dumb idea that there's just bigots or nice people in the world, and you just have to decide you're not with a bigot. And that struck me as just incredibly crude and, and tedious and actually didn't give real, I don't know, real perspective or background or depth to the complicated feelings that people of all different kinds have with their own journey towards being a homosexual or a lesbian or a straight person for that matter. 